you for coming and joining us here tonight at the Silver City Museum for our first ever story time. We are going to be doing something really neat now and that we're going to be having every other week, um, we're going to have a different guest come and read to you a different story. And we're gonna do it right here from the Silver City Museum. Well, not from this, my office, but we're going to be doing it from the parlor. Has anyone been to the Silver City Museum? Anyone? Have you been to the parlor here? It's basically kind of like a reproduction of what uh, an old time living room would be like. So Mr. Roselli or Mr. Bart is going to read to us a wonderful story called Alejandro's Gift. And I just want to see, are there any kids out there? Any adults? I'm going to talk to the adults real quick. And what I'd like you guys to um, know is that we do have a suggested donation of five dollars but i really just anything that you can give to help we're having hard times just like everyone else in the world here but at the end of the day we're just happy to have you and to be joining us with no further ado i want to say welcome mr bart roselli reading alejandro's gift everyone get snuggled in okay and here he is bart i think we're ready for our story now Thank you, Aaron, and thank you everybody for joining us tonight. And I really want to thank Aaron and Johanna, our tech crew, who discovered at the last minute that the museum's web connection was down. So people have been scrambling the last few minutes to get that up and running again. So thanks, tech, tech crew. <laughs> uh, I'm going to read a book to tonight called Alejandro's Gift. It's about a man who lives in the desert, like many of us, a man who's a little lonely. He doesn't have many visitors. And maybe that's something that you're all experiencing, not being able to get together with your abuelo or your aunts or your uncles or your cousins or your friends. Well, Alejandro had the same problem. But let's look, what, let's look and see what he did about it. Before we go, though, before we go into the book, I'd like to say hello to my good friend, Jimmy Kay, who just loves animals. And there's a lot of animals in this book. Ready? Here we go. Alejandro's Gift. Alejandro's small adobe house stood beside a lonely desert road. But beside the house stood a well and a windmill to pump water from the well. Water for Alejandro and for his only companion, his burro, Domingo. It was a lonely place and Alejandro welcomed anybody who stopped by to refresh themselves at the well. But visitors were few, and after they left, Alejandro felt lonelier than before. Here's a picture of Alejandro's adobe and his well and his windmill and his only friend, Domingo the Burro. Well, to more easily put up with these lonely hours, Alejandro planted a garden, a garden filled with carrots and beans and large brown onions and tomatoes and corn and melons and squash and of course, small red chili peppers. Most mornings found Alejandro tending his garden, watching it grow. These were the times he cherished the most and he often stayed working in his garden for hours, working until the desert heat drove him indoors for a rest. Well, the days went by, one after another, after another, with little change, until one morning when there was an unexpected visitor. The visitor came not from the desert road, 
but from the desert itself. Here's Alejandro working in his garden. A ground squirrel crept from the underbrush, moving warily over the sand. It hesitated and it looked around. Alejandro paused, keeping very quiet as the squirrel approached the garden. It ran up to one of the furrows, which was filled with water, and he drank its fill and he scampered away. After it left, Alejandro realized that for those few moments, he forgot how lonely he was. And because he felt less lonely, Alejandro found himself hoping the squirrel would come again. See if you can find the squirrel in the picture. Here's Alejandro. Here's his garden. There he is. His first visitor. Well, the squirrel did come again, and from time to time, he brought along some other small friends, wood rats and pocket gophers and jackrabbits and kangaroo rats and pocket mice, birds too. They became aware of Alejandro's garden and the water there. Road runners, Gila woodpeckers, thrashers, cactus wrens, we have cactus wrens in Silver City, sage sparrows, morning doves, and others came in the evening to perch on the branches of a mesquite bush or to rest on the arms of a lonely saguaro before dropping down for a quick drink right before nightfall. Occasionally, even an old desert tortoise could be seen plodding toward the garden. Can you see the tortoise? There's some nice looking tomatoes mm -mm. and tiny little rats. And who belongs to those ears? Well, suddenly Alejandro found that time was passing more and more quickly. He was rarely lonely anymore. <clears throat> he had only to look up from his hoe or from wherever he might be at the moment to find that there was a small friend nearby. They were all coming and visiting. Well, for a while, this was all that mattered to Alejandro. But after a time, he wasn't so sure. He began asking himself if there was something more important than just making himself less lonely. It took Alejandro a little time to see there was he began to realize that his tiny desert friends came to his card not for his company, but for water. And he found himself thinking of the other animals in the desert. There he is, talking to Domingo, trying to figure out what else he could do. Animals like the coyote and the desert gray fox, the bobcats, the skunks, the badgers, the long-nosed coatis, the javelinas, those short-tempered wild pigs of the desert, the antlered mule, the doe and her fawns. Finding enough water was not a problem. With his windmill and his well, Alejandro could supply ample water for any and all of the animals of the desert. Getting it to those who needed it was something else. That something else, Alejandro decided, was a desert water hole. Can you see? Look at all these animals living near Alejandro. Peccaries and foxes and cougars, javelinas. Without delay, Alejandro started digging. It was 
back-breaking, tiring work, and it took many, many days in the hot desert sun. But the thought of giving water to so many thirsty desert dwellers more than made up for his aching back. And when the water hole was filled, Alejandro was pleased with the gift that he made for his desert friends. There was good reason to suppose it would take time for the larger animals to discover their new source of water, so Alejandro was patient. Would the fox come? When, when would the cougars come? He went about as usual, feeding Domingo, tending the garden, and doing countless other chores. Well, days passed, and nothing happened. Still, Alejandro was confident, but the days turned to weeks, and it was still quiet at the waterhole. Why? Alejandro wondered, why? Why weren't they coming? What could he have done wrong? Well, the absence of the desert folk might have remained a mystery had Alejandro not come out of the house one morning when a skunk was in the clearing behind the waterhole. Seeing Alejandro, the skunk darted to safety in the underbrush. It suddenly became very clear why Alejandro's gift was being shunned. Now he knew why the animals weren't coming. He couldn't believe he had been so thoughtless. But what was important now was to put things right as soon as possible. Waterhole number two was built far from the house and screened by heavy desert growth. Cactus, juniper trees, big bushes. Well, when it was filled and ready, Alejandro waited with mixed emotions. He was very hopeful, yet he couldn't forget what had happened the first time. As it turned out, he was not disappointed. Look where he's building his second water hole. Protected by cactus and trees, though the animals would feel more comfortable coming and drinking Alejandro's water. While the animals of the desert did come, each as it made its own discovery, because the water hole was now sheltered from the small adobe house, and the desert road, the animals were no longer afraid. And although Alejandro could not see through the desert growth surrounding the water hole, he had ways of knowing it was no longer being shunned. He knew they were coming. How did he know? He knew by the twitter of birds gathering in the dusk. He knew by the rustling of mesquite and the quiet desert evening telling of the approach of a coyote or a bear, or maybe a desert fox. He could tell by the soft hoofbeats of the mule deer, or the unmistakable sound of a herd of javelinas charging towards the water hole. And in these moments, when Alejandro sat quietly listening to the sounds of his desert neighbors, he knew that the gift, Alejandro's gift, was not so much a gift that he had given, but a gift he had received. The end. Well, I hope you enjoyed our story tonight. It was really a wonderful look at all the, the variety of animals that live near us and how we can help each other. You know, you can get this book too right here at the, li at the, uh, the library. You can get it at the library. You can get it at our museum. And a great thing about this book, besides the story and the beautiful drawings, is in the back. There's something about every single animal that appeared in this story. It's like your own animal encyclopedia. 
anyway, thanks for visiting us with us tonight and hope to see you again in a couple of weeks. Bye. Okay. I want to thank everybody out there for joining us today. And I want to say, especially, um, if everyone wants to give a big round of applause for Mr. Bart, didn't he do a great job? Let me see those hands. Yay! Um, before we go, I want to make sure that everybody knows that we can um, buy this book, Alejandro's, at Alejandro's Gift at the Museum Gift Shop, when hopefully we'll be opening again shortly. Otherwise, please email store at silvercitymuseum.org. Um, also, I will be posting that link right now. You should see a link to, um, to uh, take a survey and give us that feedback that we need. Um, just lets us know if we're doing a good job and if there's anything that I can do um, to make things better. And it was so wonderful having you. Um, join us again on Monday, on Sunday the 17th, where we will be having Nena and Angelica will be reading Three Little Javelinas in English and in Spanish. So everyone, I want you guys to come out and give them just as much love as you did to Mr. Bart here. And I hope that everyone has a great night and gets a good night's sleep. And thank you so much for coming out and donate if you can. Have a good night. Night.